So for me, this is the tool. As a videographer slash photographer, you need the right tool to create. I've been filming all of my videos with the Panasonic Lumix GH5, which is my all-time favorite camera, maybe till now. Because today I'm doing an interview with my friend Berend who will give you his user experience of the Panasonic Lumix S5. My name is Felix and this is How to Creative, the channel where we talk creative tech and tools. Hi, my name is Berend. I'm here to talk about my new Lumix S5. Actually, via you, I got to buy my GH4, but I didn't have any lenses for it because they're expensive. I found out you can actually convert old analog lenses to the GH4 and basically to any camera. So the next step was, of course, trying anamorphic together with my analog lenses. What I like about photography and videography is that they're both very visual creative medium. Both photography and videography can influence each other. So you can see photographers have a very cinematic look or some uh, cinematographers have a very photographic look, like it's almost like someone took a picture. I think both of them are very important to me to keep developing as both a photographer and a filmmaker. What I really enjoyed about um, taking analog pictures is that you take the picture on film and that is uh, 35 millimeters or even medium format. That's like even larger, that's like six by six centimeters. But then when you take a picture with a full frame camera, then you can really feel like you're taking a picture with an analog camera because it's that large sensor again, that large film stock. So I'm using a speed booster for my GH4. People call it a hack to get a full frame sensor, but your sensor stays the same, you just change the lens you're using, which is fine, extra stop of light is good. The GH4 started to lag behind because when I was using the anamorphic lens, it would have been a Viltrox speed booster on top of the camera body, on top of that, an converter for EF mount to my analog lens. Then I would have my analog lens there, and then it would be a converter which would hold the anamorphic lens. That's six different elements that you can screw on top of each other to eventually get that look. For me, it's very strange that this, this camera, which just, it looks like a photo camera. It has sensor stabilization dedicated for anamorphic. So you can use it in anamorphic modes, which is normally this big budget film look that you're going for and you can use that on this tiny camera which I find really amazing. Of course I converted from a GH4 to the S5 now which is both a Lumix Panasonic camera and a lot of things stay the same where the buttons are and what I love about the GH4 is that their choice of buttons is immaculate. They know exactly, okay, this is what they're gonna be using, this is how they want to use it, and then also they give custom function buttons. A lot of them. It gives a lot of choice to the creator, which I really enjoy because I'm very conscious about what I do want, what I don't want. Everything is within the hand of reach. Here you can control your f-stop, control your shutter. Also here on the back you have the flip-out screen, which is of course, you know, it's so good if you're a one-man operation, it's so good. You can film from the top like that. You can go low and still check it out for setting up time lapses, setting up cameras in difficult corners. You can still see what you're doing with just your camera. No external devices needed. Talking about uh, the build quality and how to use it, I got this camera. I went out at night into the rain to shoot some pictures. You know, you have some of that? Oh, I, hell yeah, I have some B-roll of that. It was pouring from the sky. And normally when I get a new gadget that says, this is waterproof or this is weather sealed, I'm always in doubt, you know? Like, I don't really trust it. I took this in the rain knowing it was gonna work. I had no doubts whatsoever. When you feel this thing, when you see it, you know like, yeah, this can hold the rain, this can hold the snow. It's just very, very well built. They also changed the mount. This is now the new L mount, which, I mean, it's a very different mount, but it is a very close to the sensor, actually, the mount. And that is a very good thing for new lenses. Let's see, can I get it on? Yes. The L mount is very future-proof. Obviously, Panasonic and uh, Sigma are gonna make lenses for it, and you can also use Leica lenses. I will definitely, again, use the old analog lenses that I have laying around on this camera. I'm just gonna buy a converter for it. A quick note, Biren and I actually filmed a short a while ago with his analog lenses. 
If you're interested, you can click right here or the link in the description to watch it after this video. There's also been talk about the autofocus, actually a lot of talk. Autofocus was never great for Lumix cameras. They improved, it's still not great. I barely use autofocus because I convert old analog lenses. They don't have autofocus. So you just need to manually focus and get good at it, which personally I think is a really nice skill to have. I went on a skiing trip last year and I brought my GH4 and I had a feeling I could do anything with it. I could create an entire video with this one camera and I also did some time lapses as well, which is really easy and they did it the same for this camera. It's about changing this button, you're setting it up and you can do a time lapse. More amazingly, an exposure leveling setting, which means if you film a sunset or you make a time lapse of a sunset, normally what you would have is you would have manual settings and it would, the scene would get darker because the sun would be setting. Now it can compensate with ISO in such a way that you don't even see any flickering of the light whatsoever. It's just a very smooth transition where your scene doesn't lose the, the light. The GH4 didn't have any um, sensor stabilization. So I had a gimbal for it, which I barely used. Only very specific situations demanded the use of a gimbal. And I used the shoulder rig for the rest, so I could just have it on my shoulder. But now with this camera, it also has sensor stabilization. I can do night photography handheld because the sensor stabilizes, I can go to shutter speeds up to a third of a second. Having the uh, in-body stabilization basically means that you can even have a smaller rig when you really need to. You can really just bring this camera to a gig and get some really proper video exposures. When I first loaded in the footage for the GH4 and I graded it, I was blown away. And that's because I came from a very crappy Canon camera. But now I come from the GH4 and when I loaded in the footage of this puppy and Felix did a little grade in, uh, what's it called? Da Vinci Resolve. Da Vinci Resolve. <laughs> I recorded some video 4K 10 bit and when I put it into Da Vinci Resolve, I was just transported. I felt like I was in a cinema watching something. It really made me very happy. So with any tool and with any camera, the tool should serve you. You need to know what you want from a camera to know which camera you want. For me, I found that when I'm walking on the street, I see something cinematic and I want to capture that. And I can just bring this along and I can capture that cinematic footage. So for me, this is the tool. Obviously, there is no perfect camera. Every camera has its compromises. For instance, this one, it has a small HDMI port, which people don't like. You can't record to an external storage device. Um, the autofocus is lacking, but for me personally, I don't need those things. I actually like it that it has a dual SD slot in there, so I can just use my SD cards. I would recommend this camera to someone who is very creative, but doesn't have a very clear direction yet. This camera takes amazing photos, amazing videos in low light. It does everything so well that if you're not really clear yet what you're gonna do with your camera, are you gonna make photos, you're gonna make videos, you're gonna make professional time lapses, you know that this camera has got you covered. Thank you, Biren, for being in this video. I would like to add that it's not the tool, but you that has to start creating right now. Though, if you're interested in the Panasonic Lumix S5, make sure to click on the link in the description. If you decide to buy it via this link, the channel will make a small commission which will help me to continue creating and improving these videos for you. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments and tell me what your favorite camera is. Thank you so much for watching, stay creative and see you in the next one.